Hey guys, it's Mike here from Mike Stickers. Uh, today I want to talk to you all about the direction of Mike Stickers and where I'm going in the future and what I'm going to be doing. So I'm changing up some stuff and it's basically a new business strategy. So, um, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm not necessarily recommending it for you, but I'm just letting you know this is the direction that I'm going with my business. Um, we are now raising our prices. When I say we, I mean I. I'm raising my prices. You know, honestly, when I started out, I was trying to prove the business, prove that the quality of the product was there. And I did have some problems with quality at the beginning. So, you know, I wasn't really sure what to price it at and what was, you know, fair and what was also acceptable considering the quality of what I was producing. I didn't know if it was really high enough quality to produce, to charge, you know, market rate prices or if I should be below the market rate. So, what it comes down to now is I'm trying to raise my rates higher up towards the actual market rate. So when you go online and look at any of the big companies that are selling stickers that you can order them online, I'm trying to, um, I'm going to increase my prices closer to those. Um, I am trying to keep it a little bit lower than those, but it's much closer. So, and so from now on the, um, the prices are like a, like a tiered level pricing. Before, I just had, for whatever size sticker it was, whether it be a three inch or a four inch, I had a set rate. And it didn't matter if you ordered, you know, 20 of them or 100 of them. And I was also pretty loose on like the minimum order policy. Um, I was I was doing minimum orders of $10, minimum order of $20 on the labels. So t minimum order of $20 on the labels is still what I'm gonna do. But the minimum order on the die cut stickers is gonna be more like $30 now. Um, maybe like $20 on the lowest end when I, you know, it depends on the, the scale, I guess. So I'm only going to do, um, quantities. The lowest quantity I'm going to do is 30 and then I'm going to do, you know, however many up, you know, into the thousand or 2000 or whatever. Right now I'm not really geared up. Um, the BN20, it's not, it doesn't print fast enough to do thousands and thousands of stickers, um, efficiently. So being the fact that I still have a day job and I'm splitting the time and a YouTube channel that's becoming successful and that I need to spend more time on now, um, I don't have as much time to do certain things. So I don't want to get bogged down in a multi-thousand sticker order that's going to take me weeks to fill and then not really pay off what I really need it to. So while I'm still working the other job, I need to just focus on doing kind of the things that pay the most and the things that I'm selling the most, which is die cut stickers and continuous roll labels. So I'm going to do setup fees now. Um, no offense to any of my viewers who have actually ordered from me, but I do have quite a few graphic designers that order stickers from me and they like to do a bunch of different designs and they do very small quantities of each design like 15 of each design and i'm not singling out anyone because i know people are going to be like oh he's talking about me because i ordered 15 of several different designs but it's more than just a couple of people that do that so that's one of those things that starting out i didn't want to turn away that business i didn't want to charge for setup fees and seem like i'm trying to gouge the customer but at a certain point, it's taken away a lot of time from what I'm doing to set that up. I'm not a graphic designer, so setting up everything in the computer, I guess, probably takes me a little bit longer than some people. Um, I might, you know, struggle a little bit with certain aspects of it certain times. And that's just one of those things that I need to make sure I'm getting paid for the time that I'm doing that. So I would always kind of short myself. That was me um, just shorting myself. I should have been charging that for that. Uh, from day one so from now on um, I am doing a free initial setup and then a, every additional design is gonna have a five dollar setup fee so that's gonna just ensure that you know I'm getting paid for my time because I was spending way too much time setting up all those different designs from now on I'm not gonna be doing any more cut vinyl I'm not going to be doing any banners. I'm not going to be doing any magnets. There's just continuous roll labels and die cut stickers. I can do kiss cut stickers, but I'm not pushing that. I'm not telling clients about that um, anymore. I think I took it off my website already. If I didn't, I need to. 
but there are certain people that might know what kiss cut stickers are if they know what they are then i'll you know facilitate that order it's going to be a little bit different pricing because it's more labor intensive but there are certain stickers that depending on how you're going to cut them it just makes sense to do them as kiss cut stickers when i say kiss cut what i mean is it has you know you're cutting a continuous cut all the way around the image where you want it and then you're and then outside of that you're going to cut all the way through a die cut where it goes all the way through the backing material so it leaves a little bit of a border of just the backing material outside of the design so that it makes it easier to peel the sticker off but what it really does is that contour cut knife can cut much sharper angles it can do and basically an exact um, outline of designs without having to soften up the corners when you're doing die cutting you really have to soften up the corners so that it cuts it smooth otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of jagged edges because the way the knife is having to constantly it's perforate cutting it i mean it's it's moving it down and cutting moving forward going down cutting more and so when it's doing that it's just not a smooth cut when it's doing the normal contour cut with the 45 degree blade it's literally just tracing around it it's not doing the up and down force and so it's a completely different style of cut it's going to produce a different um you know result so if you're doing say a block letter and you need it to be uh and well i mean it can do like squares and stuff like that fine die cut but say like um for instance one thing that pops in my head is like a sports jersey or a sports like they have certain letters that are kind of like real blocky and i've had it where people want those letters cut out for uh, to put like on helmets and you don't want to have to put a big white outline around it. You want it to trace the design perfect and have those sharp corners and a bunch of sharp corners, like as it goes up inside the letters and around a uh, picture like an S and it having, all, or I'm sorry, like a five or something and it having all those sharp angles and it coming around several times. Um, that's better it's easier to do that or i guess you end up better results when you use the 45 degree blade and do a contour cut around it and then you can con and then you can die cut further out around that so that you can punch out the whole thing without messing up the design i hope that makes sense uh, but anyways that's what i refer to as a kiss cut design sorry I, it was kind of a long explanation but anyway, so I will do that if I need to, but I don't promote it. I don't tell people about it. They have to kind of already know what that is to request it. Um, and the, the main reason for all of what I'm telling you is to just build a process that I can repeat over and over and over again and not have to continue to change up what I'm doing. Um, whenever I have to re-gear and do cut vinyl or banners or magnets or anything like that, it just it it messes up the flow of everything it's not conducive for high uh high production you know i'm not doing high production here but that's kind of the goal is to produce my or uh, increase my productivity and create and, produ and um, produce as many stickers out of my little shop as i can and when i'm trying to split that up between different you know services that i offer it just doesn't flow very good uh, another business owner a long time ago told me that I don't need to spread myself too thin. At the time, I was looking at buying a copy machine so that I could do, you know, just traditional copies for people and, and print, you know, just normal printing type stuff. And he he actually owns a little little print place. And, you know, he wasn't trying to discourage me as because I was competition or anything. He just said, look, Michael, I got rid of some of my machines and some of my equipment because I couldn't compete with some of the online vendors. And then also it was just spreading me too thin. He said, just focus on what you're really good at and don't spread yourself too thin. So I always kind of when I first heard that, it was almost kind of seemed offensive to me, um, like making me think I couldn't handle doing it all. But he was right. It. it you need to just kind of focus on your niche stuff and not try to offer the whole world to everybody. So I'm not doing the magnets 
or the banners, which I used to do. I'm not doing cut vinyl because it is just horrible. I was making a video about the cut vinyl. I'll probably put that out in the near future. Um, but it's just horrible. I did my last order. I don't plan on doing it anymore. Actually, I'm still in the middle of my last order. I'm still working on it because it was a, a pretty big order. And it's just so tedious and the letters are so small. They're hard to weed. And um, anyways, yeah, I don't like doing the cut vinyl. I don't want to do... It's like the thing that I despise the most about this industry. But it's funny because it actually <laughs> originally is what got me interested because I used to see... I used to go into a sign company with an old business... Had a one of my old jobs i used to have to get a lot of signs made and stuff so i used to always go into the into a vinyl graphic shop and actually see how they made the signs i used to always buy them from them and have to go you know install them in different places throughout the city and so uh, you know it was something that i just thought back then that man this is kind of cool i could do something like this and it uh it actually looked like fun at the time to me when i saw the weeding i actually thought that part of it looked like fun and that's crazy to me because that's the part that I dislike the most now. But anyway, so yeah, none of that stuff anymore. And then one of the new things that I'm kind of excited about, I haven't gotten started with it yet, is that I'm going to start selling on Amazon. Um, I already got approved for all that. I just, uh, it's been a crazy week at work, end of the month, and I just haven't had time to set up everything yet. I got like, I got everything approved it's actually it was a really hard process and not hard but it's just it was uh, very thorough and it was a lot of steps to it they make you do biometric they do biometric checking they actually run your face through a um, what am I trying to say a facial recognition program and compare it against your driver's license and make sure that it's actually you um, they just the process is probably more thorough and more detailed than any other pro other time that I've ever tried to get approved for doing anything. So I was kind of impressed and then a little bit annoyed at the same time because it was it, there was a lot of steps to it. But anyway, so I got approved to sell on Amazon. I just haven't listed my first item yet. So that's the last thing I have to do is just start listing stuff. I just haven't done that. I also want to set up a Shopify store and Shopify specifically because I think it's one of only three types of stores that I can link to my YouTube channel now that I am monetized. I don't know anything about the other two channel, the other two um, types of stores. Shopify is the only company I've heard of out of the three that they have, uh, which kind of surprises me. I have an Etsy store. I wish I could just link my Etsy store so it's easier, but it looks like I got to set up a Shopify store. So who knows? That could end up benefiting me. Um, but I, I'm excited about selling on Amazon just because I think that that's going to reach such a huge audience. Um, you know, so many possible customers. I don't really know how many people are on Etsy. Um, I didn't ever buy anything on Etsy for the longest time. And then I only started buying stuff on Etsy because that's where... I knew that someone was selling some drone parts and then once I started buying the drone parts on Etsy I realized that um, you know I could sell drone parts on there that I was making so I started out selling drone parts and then once I started the sticker company I started selling stickers on there and I still get some Etsy orders um, you know that's nothing that's um, to kind of shrug off it seems like my etsy orders are very small by comparison to everything else but i think last year it accounted for like twenty five hundred dollars worth of revenue so i mean you know that's nothing to like i said just shrug off i mean i'll take twenty five hundred dollars extra a year you know for not doing a whole lot and uh just a few minutes before making this video i got an order in for fifty eight dollars for some uh, business card stickers that i make so, you know, I'll, I'll take that Etsy business, even though it's kind of slow to come in. Um, it's still, it still work and I appreciate it coming in anyway. So I'm gonna, you know, that's setting up on Etsy or sorry, Amazon and Shopify was the next thing I was talking about. And then after that, I'm gonna, um, plan on trying to make some flyers and I don't really know what you refer to them as, but the, um, I want to call them like a postcard it's not a postcard, but you know, like the flyers you get in the mail, but I don't know why. When I think of flyer, I think of a soft material. These things are more of a stiff, rigid material. I'm trying to look on my desk and see if I kind of have an example to show. Um, 
But you know, you get stuff in the mail all the time for like plumbing companies, tree trimming companies, whatever those, uh, you know, the direct mailing campaign, whatever. I don't remember what you call it, but basically I plan on making some of those and not necessarily sending them out through the mail because I don't know what that costs or how that even works out. But just something that I can be able to hand out to people. I it Basically, more than anything, I want to do it for like door knocking. So when I just go door to door to businesses and try to pitch my services, I'd like to be able to have something to hand them with more information other than just a sticker. Because up to this point, I've just always handed people one of my stickers that says, you know, MikeStickers.com on it. And, um, you know, I think that that would that would help out and make make the company look more, you know, legitimate or more established it just i think it's a better face of the business when i have something more professional like that so um i also want to think about trying to look into doing some radio advertising i was gonna do that before i knew someone that worked in the industry and then she ended up moving and moving up in the in the world and moved into television so She's no longer at the radio station. I don't really want to do a TV commercial and can't, I don't think I could ever afford a TV commercial. I think I could probably barely afford a radio advertisement, but I like the concept of radio advertisement. Whenever I listen, I mean, I listen to the radio all the time when I'm in the car. It's just, I, I'm a AM, FM radio kind of a guy. And when I'm listening to the radio, the commercials, when I hear them, you know, several times on the same station, eventually it gets like embedded in my head. And it's just, I, I, I don't know. I don't even watch um, TV really. I mean, obviously I'm on the internet and stuff and I see advertisements on the internet, but I'm not a TV type of a guy. Like there's not TV commercials that like stick in my head, but there is radio commercials that stick in my head. And I just think that that's going to be at a lower price point as far as purchasing advertising space. And so I think that's a good place to advertise when you have this sort of a business and you just want to reach a large audience. So I want to look into that. You know, I don't know what the return. I, I mean, I, I would assume that that would pr have a pretty good return on my investment. But, you know, right now, a lot of marketing or the majority of marketing, I think worldwide is just through you know, the internet through Google. Google, I believe, is the largest advertiser in the world. Obviously, they own YouTube. Um, anyways, but so social media marketing is something that uh, should be considered also, and that's something that I think I definitely need to do some more of as well. I've already had just uh, not really advertisements, but I had like just um, on Facebook Marketplace, I would list um, stickers for sale and people would reach out from that so I think that if I did some social media marketing on like Instagram or Facebook that that would really pay off uh, I know that I've done a little bit in the past but not much I think I just need to put more effort into that and when I say effort I mean money because you know dollars add up to um, you know you, you basically if you only do $20 worth of advertising you shouldn't re expect too big of a return I guess is what I'm saying so I need to invest more into that and then hopefully I'll get a better return so I'm gonna do another video soon about actually like leads and trying to build up the business from the beginning and is, is get getting your initial customers and all that sort of stuff so I'm not trying to get too much into that in this video this is just basically how I'm trying to trim the fat on the company. There's some stuff that I don't want to do anymore. And I'm trying to make everything a little bit more profitable for me so that the time that I do spend making stickers is going to benefit me more. Obviously, I have a, I have a, a loan, a lease a payment on that printer on the Roland BN20 behind me here. And that I have to make sure that I make a certain amount of money every month to pay that off. So far, it hasn't been a problem. I'm, I'm making enough money to pay for that every month. But... You know, raising the prices is kind of scary for me. I'll tell you, it's it's a little scary because I want to make sure I'm making the right decision. But there's been some things that have led me into this direction and then something today that happened that validated it for me. So I have a good customer of mine. I'll just, I'll just go by Troy. I'll call him Troy. I don't know if he watches any of these videos, but he's... Uh, 
he's a good guy and he's always given me advice ever since I started the company. You know, I ended up meeting him through the drone world and um, he has a pretty successful business that he started on his own. He just decided to quit his job one day and start up his own company and it's really paid off. So he's uh, has one of the leading drone manufacturing companies right now doing custom drones and um, needless to say his his work is is uh, is being used throughout the entire drone industry right now pretty much so he's a rock star in what he does and so any advice that I get from him I try to really take to heart so he told me a while back you know he buys stickers from me from time to time for some special projects that he has going on and stuff that I can't really talk about because his clients are usually private clients um, that are doing some pretty cool pretty crazy stuff that usually has to stay under wraps um, for a long time if not forever um, so anyways he's bought some stickers from me and there was a project he had going on recently um, that we were talking about he ended up buying some stickers from me and then he ended up telling me after I delivered them to them he said you know Mike I would have paid at least double the amount of money for these stickers and he said you really should check your prices and you really should do some market research and and see where you're at compared to everyone else he said because I, I think it you're too low so this is one of my clients telling me that I'm not charging him enough money for the stickers so you know I told this to someone else and they said well when someone pays you do you have a way they can give you a tip or something so I said yeah I, I do but just because people think you aren't charging enough doesn't mean they're gonna pay you more so it doesn't translate to a tip so if you want to get compensated the proper amount of money then you need to charge the proper amount of money so he was what helped me lead to this idea that I need to change the prices I was already kind of thinking I needed to make a price change already before he said it and that really kind of made me it validated what I was thinking but then I went ahead and was got everything like in place to make the change today this morning I went to my day job I completely forgot to make the changes so I got someone that called me or sorry they sent me a text message they were a referral from one of my real good customers and they said you know we want to talk to you about pricing for stickers um, for our church and I let them know I said well you know, I knew, I mean, I'm at work at my day job. I didn't have access to be able to edit my website while I was at my day job. And so my website still had the old pricing. I hadn't made the change yet. And that, that's at the point when I realized that I'd forgotten to do it. And so I told them, I said, well, you know, my prices are going into effect tonight. My new prices are going into effect tonight. I've just now changed up everything. I said, but I haven't made the changes yet. So I'll honor you know these old prices that are still listed on the website and then they responded back and said well if you don't mind me asking what are the new prices going to be and so i sent them a picture of my new price list and then their response back was um let me read it to you because i don't want to misquote them their response back was i don't mind doing the new prices for you i would love to support you So yeah, the prices are substantially more with the new pricing. And their response was, I don't mind doing the new pricing. I want to support you. So yeah, that validates it for me that I'm doing the right thing. So I've already established that my stickers are high quality. I've already built up a loyal customer base that's so many numbers high so many cu customers you know i don't uh, obviously i don't have thousands of customers yet but i would say i have upwards of a hundred customers that i've you know fulfilled orders for and I, I don't know how what percentage of those are ordering again on a regular basis but i have quite a few return customers i have quite a, f a few loyal customers and even if it's not uh, uh, someone that's ordered for me on a regular basis a lot of people are, are um, you know passing the word around 
Anyway, so I'm not as worried now about getting the actual business established because I have business coming in. New people are reaching out. I'm having return customers as well. So everything's going, you know, as you would think that it should. So, uh, you know, everyone wants their growth to be faster than it is, I'm sure. So I think that's normal. But quite frankly, I'm okay with the way things are going right now. I'm able to pay for all the equipment. I'm able to maintain everything right now and keep it going. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I haven't had to use a credit card from time to time um, to just help keep things floating, but that's, you know, like for material and stuff like that. But I pay that stuff off as I can. So, um, you know, the business is basically taking care of itself. It's not always hugely profitable, but it is taking care of itself. And, you know, I am making money off of it and it is helping to pay the bills. So there was a time when it was doing when I thought it was on a trajectory to do even more than what it's doing right now. But I'm still happy with the success at this point. I was hoping it would be, you know, where I could quit my job by now. It's not at that point yet, but I'm still happy with it. So anyways, you know, that was pretty much what I wanted to talk about with y'all. Um, but, you know, just stuff to consider. Like I said, this is not, the, I'm not telling y'all that this is how you should run your business, but this is what I'm going to be doing from this point moving forward. And so if you want to check out the prices of what I'm charging, you can see it on my website, mikestickers.com. And, um, you know, just make sure that you're not undercutting yourself. You know, you, you can undercut the competition, but don't undercut yourself, you know. Um, just make sure that it's worth your while because one of the things that I've realized is that people will pay, um, you know, I mean, what I was trying to say, people appreciate someone who is local, someone who they can look face to face in when they pick up an order or place an order or, you know, just know that it's a, it's a normal human being that they can have a conversation with if they need to. If there's a problem that arises, they're not going to have trouble getting in touch with me. You know, all that sort of stuff translates to securing the, the job, getting the business. So you don't have to be a huge amount cheaper than everyone else to get the business. And if those are the customers that are constantly coming at you that are trying to get the absolute cheapest product out there, then there's a possibility you don't want that customer. Um, know your worth as an individual, know your worth as a company. And if you're doing things, you know, at a high level and you know that your product is good, there's no reason why you should try to undercut yourself and, and sell it for cheaper than you should. So if you're using something like the Roland BN20, then it's going to be a good product. You shouldn't worry about it. There's certain things you have to look out for, like curling of the edges. If you're using um, certain materials, maybe, or if you're not allowing it to dry for long enough before you laminate it and cut it, then you might have some quality issues like that. But you're not going to have the, fa the, the ink fading or running and stuff like that. Um, you know, so you should be confident that you can charge a good market rate for your stickers if you're using this equipment. So, anyways... I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate all the people that have subscribed this last week. Um, it, it's really helped out. The numbers are looking good on the analytics. I know that stuff doesn't matter to you, but like I said, I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm spending time on it. Um, I've got sticker orders I got to do right now, but I'm working on this video to keep the content coming out. I want to push my videos up higher in the algorithm so they can reach more people. And um, yeah, I'm trying to treat this as a business, guys. So help me out if you can. So y'all take it easy. Peace.